welcome to EPG Patshala. Today we'll be discussing the module on Gandhian era and women's participation in the national movement from the paper Women Governance and Politics. In this module we'll try to develop an understanding regarding the nature of national movement during Gandhian era and the role of women played in different Gandhian movements. We'll also try to have a critical look on the nature of women's participation during this phase. By the 20th century, when we look on the national movement, we find that it had taken shape of an organized movement. While during the moderate phase, what do we see that movement was confined to a small group that was elite educated class. But with the advent of extremist phase, we find a major change took place in the nature of national movement. The partition of Bengal proved to be a very major event in changing the nature of national movement. The launch of Swadeshi movement penetrated down the national movement into different sections of the society. But this movement took shape of a mass movement in true form only with the arrival of Gandhi who had a very rich experience of working with masses in South Africa and he knew the importance of mass power. When he came to India, he tried to connect every Indian with the national movement. He brought the issue of poor, illiterate, peasantry and working class into the mainstream so that the scope and base of the national movement can be extended. In India, he started his Satyagraha from Champaran, a very small place in Bihar, where he fought for the cause of farmers against the exploitation by British indigo planters. Then he chose Kheda in Gujarat, again for the local farmers, and then Ahmedabad mill workers. From such Satyagraha, he tried to connect ordinary men and their issues with the national movement and on the other hand he created a base for the national movement at the grassroots level. He made it clear that in order to be part of the national movement one need not to do big things and big sacrifices rather he can be or she can be part of the national movement from their given role, space and occupation. In fact, what Gandhi tried to do was, he tried to connect every space, role and occupation with the national movement. And his this approach created a new space for women in the national movement. We cannot say that before arrival of Gandhi, women were not visible, they were. In fact, by the time Gandhi came to India, women had already been emerged as a very strong force within the Indian National Congress, the scattered attempt of different women groups to protect women's interest was taken shape of an organized women's movement and to make women's voice audible at the national platform already Women's Indian Association was formed in 1917. But what we can see that these women who were visible, they were representing a particular class that was elite educated class. Still, the illiterate, the poor, the rural women were excluded. Gandhi tried to include this excluded section of women in the movement. He made them realize that they have immense potential to contribute to the cause of nation. Women's ability to nurturance, their love, and their ability to self-suffering, according to Gandhi, would prove them to be the best soldiers in non-violent satyagras. Gandhi could understand the nature of Indian traditional society and therefore made it clear that in order to be part of the national movement, they need not necessarily coming out of the private realm, rather they can be part of the national movement from their familial roles and from the private realm. And perhaps this was the reason why Gandhi's appeal for women's participation in national movement 
did not meet with much opposition. But one point which is very significant to note is that Gandhi brought a major change in the nature of the private. Why? Because he made this private politically conscious. He transported the public concern to, to the private. And therefore, the private did not remain anymore the dull sphere where the household chores has to be performed in a very routine manner. Rather, it became politically conscious. And when we look at the formal entry of women, ordinary women, in the Gandhian movement, we may see at the hesitation against the Rowlett Act. The Rowlett Act of 1919 was an open attack on individual liberty and legally enabled the government to arrest and to detain Indians only on the ground of suspicion and to keep them in prisons without trial. The act was fiercely opposed throughout the country. Opposing the act, Gandhi declared April 6, 1919 as the date for general strike. He appealed women of all classes and communities to take part in Satyagraha against the act. The massacre of Jallianwala Bagh on April 13, 1919 resulted into increased anger among women against the British rule, especially in the province of Punjab, where women were the major sufferers. The massacre and brutality inflicted upon women by the police under the martial law played very significant role in raising women's consciousness against British rule. Women actively worked for collecting funds to help the victims of Jallianwala Bagh massacre. Now, Ordinary women had learned the language of resentment and had become politically conscious to see and challenge British racial supremacy. This anger paved the way for active participation of women in the non-cooperation movement. In August 1920, Gandhi decided to launch non-cooperation movement and his proposal was accepted by the Indian National Congress at the special session held on August 20, 1920. The major program of the non-cooperation movement were surrender of titles and honorary positions, resignation from local bodies, boycott of government functions, courts, government schools and colleges, boycott of foreign goods and promotion of Swadeshi goods and khadi. In these programs, women actively participated women who participated in this movement can be broadly divided into two categories. First, those women who worked for promotion of Swadeshi and boycott of foreign goods from within the domestic sphere. Second, those women who came out in the public sphere to support the movement. Women even started making their own organizations like Rashtriya Istri Sangh which worked for promotion of Khadi in Bombay. Women's participation increased rapidly in the movement. The All India Ladies Conference at Ahmedabad was attended by 6,000 women who came to listen to Bayama, who appealed women to join Congress as volunteers. The participation of women was not limited to any specific province, rather was a nationwide feature but the nature of participation varied from province to province. In Bombay and Calcutta, women actively picketed at liquor shop, but in Punjab, nature of women's participation was little different. They did not go picketing liquor shops, nor did they court arrest. During this phase, numerical strength of women in the Indian National Congress was also increasing. A hundred and 44 women delegates attended the 1921 Congress session. In 1922, the Bengal Provincial Congress Committee session was presided over by a woman, Basanti Devi. In addition to this, a special girl volunteer corps under the headship 
of Durga Bai Deshmukh was formed. After suspension of non-cooperation movement, Gandhi turned his focus to constructive program, where he saw special role for women. He projected spinning as the key solution to the Indian problems as well as to the women's problem. He was of the opinion that educated women should turn their attention to the problems of their rural and poor sister and should work to uplift them. He appealed to educated women to descend from their western heights and come down to India's plain and argued that these questions of liberation of women, liberation of India, removal of untouchability and the like resolve themselves by penetrating into the villages and reconstruction or rather reformation of village life. Now, women's participation in civil disobedience movement will have a look on the nature of women's participation in the civil disobedience movement. The movement was launched by Gandhi in 1930. It gave a new momentum to women's participation. The movement started with Gandhi's historic Dandi March from Ahmedabad to Dandi to make salt in defiance of the British rule. Initially, Gandhi was little reluctant about including women in the march, but his decision was widely opposed by women organization and women leaders. Ultimately, due to mounting pressure of women leaders and organizations, Gandhi wrote to the Congress committee to allow women to participate in the movement. After removal of the restriction, women from different parts of the country, beating all previous record of women's participation, took active part in the movement. What is very interesting to see is that the Congress Working Committee, which was earlier against women's participation in Salt Satyagraha, they started giving them major responsibilities. Further, a number of women organizations like Mahila Rashtriya Sangh, Desh Sevika Sangh, Nari Satyagraha Samiti, the Ladies Picketing Board, Istri Swarajya Sangh, and the Swayam Sevika Sangh were set up by women to mobilize women for political participation. These organizations have twin goals, political mobilization of women and training them in constructive program. Organized participation of women in civil disobedience movement made it clear that women's participation was not only a matter of giving some kind of concession to the weaker sex, rather it was essential for strengthening the voice of nation against the imperial power. In fact, brutality inflicted by the police upon women satyagrahis who were non-violently opposing unjust laws unmasked the civilizing mission claim of the imperial power. British officials themselves accepted that it was participation of women in the movement which put the British government in a tough position. The movement got wide national and international attention and sympathy due to participation of women. Thus, women's massive participation in the non-violent movement gave validity to the movement and shifted moral authority from the British rulers to the unarmed non-violent subjects. Besides, women's unconditional participation gave validity to women's claim that women have equal potential and commitment to serve the cause of the nation which make them fit to demand their equal share in the political sphere. Now we need to have a look on the movement for women's right during the Gandhian era. During the Gandhian era, movement for women's rights and national movement were running parallel. A major demand of women's movement was women's franchise. 
in 1914 sarojini naidu led the delegation to meet montagu for women's suffrage in 1918 due to her efforts a resolution got passed at the special congress session in support of women's suffrage the arguments she made in support of women's rights were not based on sameness principle rather on the complementarity idea pleading the case for women's suffrage she ensured that right to vote would never deviate women from their traditional roles but unlike the moderate tone of sarojini naidu women leaders like sarla devi supported the cause of women's equal share in the public realm arguing that women can perform same roles as fellow workers of men in politics and other spheres during this phase on the one hand awareness among women especially among the educated women regarding franchise was taking a concrete shape on the other nationalist leaders like gandhi were in favor of postponing the demands of women's franchise and to turn the focus solely on the fight against the common enemy even some women leaders like madam kama were also of the similar opinion but despite patriarchal oppositions and paternalistic suggestions pro franchise women continued their fight such women leaders questioned the policy of indian national congress relating to women's role in the indian national congress and national movement resenting against indian national congress neglect of women's issues a meeting was called by women leaders in bengal to form a separate congress sarla devi chaudhrani stressed on the need of separate congress for women and gave a call to women to join the worldwide women's movement resenting against the limited role given to women by congress in the national movement sarla devi chaudhrani said congress assigned to women the position of law breakers only and not law makers therefore women must demand equal treatment and equal status such a strong views gradually resulted in some success in some success in securing limited right to vote for women at the level of provincial legislatures but the goal of universal franchise was still a far goal to achieve women's organizations and women leaders continued their fight for right to vote but gradually women leaders themselves got divided on the issue while one group agreed on special reservation for women in place of universal fr- franchise as an interim measure women leaders of women's indian association all india women's conference and national council of women in india were against it and were demanding nothing less than universal franchise thus women's movement during this phase was uniform neither on issue nor strategies it was divided in multiple groups further the women's organizations during this phase were not representing interests of all women the ordinary poor working rural illiterate women actively participated in the nationalist movement but women's organizations led by western educated elite could not integrate these women and their issues into women's movement thus women's movement remained as forbes said too hindu too middle class and too urban to appeal to or adequately represent all indian women now we'll try to see women's participation in quit india movement after the active participation of women in the civil disobedience movement participation of women became an accepted fact and in fact essential for success of the movement being disappointed by british war policy and their neglect of indian demands all india congress committee in bombay session on august 8 1942 passed the historic 
Quit India resolution and urged for a mass non-violent struggle. After the arrest of Congress leaders on August 9, 1942, the outrage of people resulted in countrywide protest, wherein women's participation was remarkable. They were involved in this movement in different capacities, ranging from participating in mass protest, strikes, and demonstrations to running parallel government and conducting secret underground activities. Women's self-defense committees were set up to impart training in self-defense. To coordinate these self-defense committees, Mahila Atmaraksha Samiti was formed. Thus, Gandhi's do and die speech had an electrifying impact on all women, rural, urban, literate, literate, working class and peasant. Women leaders like Usha Mehta, Aruna Asaf Ali, Matangini Hazra, Sucheta Kriplani and Sarojini Naidu led campaigns in a very strategic manner which proved that by this time women were fully capable of not only participating in the movement but rather of leading the movement. Apart from the big names, there were a large number of women who led campaigns at the local levels. Usha Mehta, who joined the movement as volunteer, set up a radio transmitter, Voice of Freedom, to broadcast news of protest and arrest, which became a major medium of spreading patriotic feelings. Thus, during the Quit India movement, women participated with a new vigor as self-disciplined soldiers who could take their own stand in absence of leaders. In the movement, women's role was beyond the complementarity ideal advocated by Gandhi. Unlike the previous movement, this time there was no demarcation like men's role and women's role. They almost took up the same responsibility and roles. Further, the cause of nation took a lead over the cause of women and hence barring a few exceptions, women leaders and organization got united on the point that this was the high time for thinking in terms of the nation and so to put a temporary stop on the feminist agenda. On the basis of the above account, what we find? We see that Gandhian era created a new space for women. This time their participation was neither limited nor symbolic. But the scholars have shown their reservation on the nature of women's participation during the Gandhian era and on Gandhi's view on the role of women in the movement. So we need to have a critical look on the nature of women's participation during the Gandhian era. We may begin with Jane Matson Everett, who is of the opinion that Gandhi, though wanted to include women in the movement, but somehow he was not in favor of giving them a role in the public realm. She argues that though women participated during this phase but what we can see that they were not given leadership roles. Everett criticizes Gandhi's idea of complementary sex roles which support different sets of duties and roles for men and women. She argues that Gandhi was not always so supportive of women's participation in public life. She further charges that though Gandhian movements encouraged women's participation, but except leaders like Sarojini Naidu and Anasuya Sarabhai, we don't find women holding leadership position. She also says even these leaders were not the independent leaders as Gandhi was always the supreme commander. She argues that 
Gandhi included women in most of his Satyagraha campaigns, but responded angrily when women wanted to step over the limits he set. Further, most of the women holding leadership position in Gandhian movements were allowed to assume leadership position only when their male relatives got arrested. Everett even argued that most of women leaders who joined Gandhian campaigns were relatives of prominent male leaders and were acting as a representative of these male leaders and not as independent leaders. Similar arguments have been made by Gay Lomwit who argues that Gandhi though was an advocate of political revolution but wanted to keep the Indian social structure and relations intact and thus appear to be a conservative in the social realm. Thus Gandhi wanted according to Amwit a political revolution without social revolution. However, despite the above criticisms, it cannot be denied that the Gandhian era unfolded new vistas for women in the political and public realm and created a niche for women in post-independence Indian politics. Madhu Kishwar writes that Gandhian movements created for women a new dignity in public life, a new confidence and a new self-view and thus transformed women from passive object to active subjects or agent of reform. So students, now we need to have a quick look what we have discussed. We saw how a major change took place in the nature of national movement with the arrival of Gandhi and it became a mass movement, it became everyone's movement and this created a new space for women. Women across different sections, class, caste, race, religion participated in the movement. Women's ability to love, nurturance and self-sacrifice were projected as their special attributes to be the perfect soldiers for the non-violent Satyagraha. Gandhi was not in favor in the initial phase for giving same role to men and women. He was an advocate of complementary sex roles. He also made it clear that women need not to come out of the private realm necessarily rather they can be part of the movement from the private realm itself. But one point is very significant that he politicized the private sphere. When we look at different Gandhian movement and women's role in that, we may find that there is slight change in the nature of women's participation that is very significant to note. During the non-cooperation movement, women participated throughout the country, but we may find regional variation in their participation. In the civil disobedience movement, their participation was very organized. A number of women groups were formed and even women assumed leadership roles. This was the phase when the national movement and the movement for women's right or the women's movement were running parallel. What we find that women's movement during this, this phase was divided on many issues and different groups. And when we come to the Quit India movement, we find that women participated with a new vigor. All previous records of women's participation in different movement were beaten up by women's participation during this phase. This time they moved beyond the complementary sex roles. There was no demarcation like men's role and women's role. 
and they became the leaders of different groups that was a major change to see thus we may conclude that gandhian phase created a new space for women opened up new vistas for women and most importantly converted them from passive object to active subject thank you